What's up, YouTube? It's your girl, Tia B, and you are in the place to be with me. Um, I know you're probably looking at the title thinking, what in the world, Tia? Um, this will probably be like one of my longest videos, but I'm going to give you just a little bit of background knowledge on myself. Um, when I came out of high school, I was a certified nursing assistant. I had professional nursing training. Um, recently, well, no, just back it up a little bit. Um, I've done phlebotomy. Um, so I've always been interested into the, uh, in the medical field. Um, recently, I've been studying to um, become a personal trainer. So that's why you see a lot of health and fitness on my page. That's my passion. Um, the The whole personal trainer thing has been kind of a headache. Um, it's not a very it's not an easy test. I took it twice, and yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that giving you all knowledge and sharing my know-how um, will kind of help spark me to get back into my reading and all. So even though I'm no, I'm not a certified nursing assistant anymore, um, no, I'm not a certified phlebotomist, and I'm not yet a certified personal trainer, I do have the knowledge and the know-how to share some information with you, but do know um, that if you experience any issues or any problems, what I will be going through in this video, consult your doctor. I mean, that goes for any kind of um, health or fitness blogs or videos that you watch. Um, if you experience pain or anything, stop. Consult your doctor. Make sure that you can exactly do that exercise. So what I do is I get emails from um, a company, I believe it's called um, Everyday Health. I, I don't know if it's Share Everyday Health or Everyday Health. Um, I'm going to put their link below. And um, this one in particular came up um, in my email and it fascinated me because I'm like, you know, a lot of people, I mean, it's not really like, you know, your your table dinner time talk. Be like, so how was your poo today? Oh, it was lovely. Thanks for asking. I mean, that's not really, you know, dinner time conversation, but it is stuff that we do need to know. It's stuff that we should educate ourselves on. Um, I'm a firm believer that our bodies change each and every day, every second right now. Something else is breaking down within our systems. Um, but the thing is to learn your body, know your body, know how it ticks and, and, and how it works and start realizing if you see anything that might be off, um, monitor it. And if it continues, consult your doctor. So I'm actually going to be reading off of this page, um, giving you this information. Uh, I, I found it very, very entertaining, seriously. So I hope that not only are you entertained, but you will learn as well. Stay tuned. She got a shake a little something. Shake a little something. Ooh. Throwing that thing from left, right, side to side. She got to have a home money. Time. If you ain't here to party, take your ass back home. If you get it naughty, baby, here's my phone. Slide with your boy to the bar. Slide with your boy to the car. I've been searching. All right, so um, I do a little wardrobe change, make myself a little comfortable. Um, but like I said, um, we get started. Um, the information that I'm pulling from is from a website. Man, my ass curl is popping tonight. Anyway, uh, information is called Everyday Health. I'm going to make sure that I cite that information below. But um, let's get started. I'm going to take a lot of information. There's a gastroenterologist. Gastroenterologist. His name is Anish Seth. And he's a um, medical doctor. Uh, a lot of his information is actually on this paper, and I'm going to be reading from that. Um, but what we're going to talk about is what's normal, um, what's healthy, what's weird, things to kind of look for. Um, again, uh, truthfully, your poop, a.k.a. stool, bowel movement, doo-doo, whatever you want to call it, is um, it's an important clue to your overall health. That's uh, basically what this... Um, this article is talking about just kind of letting you know if there's changes or anything that happen and occur within your stool, it could possibly be a problem or issue or um, could be healthy. So we want to make sure we take a look at all those healthy things as well. So 
What is poop? <laughs> We're gonna start out with some poop concerns. So some poop concerns is number one, diarrhea. Diarrhea is um, basically, it's speeding stool. So basically, your poop is doing 85 miles per hour in a 45 mile per hour zone. <laughs> so diarrhea happens when your stool passes through your large intestines too fast. Then you have constipation. Your stool goes into slow mode. And I think about it, I could have just recorded it normal and just like slowed it down some. So yeah, basically, constipation is when your stool moves too slow through the um, large intestines. And then you have bowel incontinence. Bowel incontinence basically is something that a lot of the older uh, generation deals with and it's when they have no control over holding those bowel movements. I'm going back to diarrhea now. Diarrhea is basically loose stool. Everybody knows that. Um, and it occurs if you have a bowel movement that's watery runny up to three times out the day. Yeah, I know it sounds really gross, but come on, work with me. Let me educate you real fast. Acute diarrhea only happens for like a day or two. No more than three days. If you are going and you have diarrhea more than three days, that is a gastronomical issue. You need to consult your physician. Okay, and then you have your constipation. Um, it's when you have difficulty passing your stools. Um, it's hard poop, um, painful bowel movements. So you find yourself like <laughs> straining. Don't strain. We'll talk about that later on within the movie, the video. But here's some good news. Normal poop. Normal poop um, is not hard or lumpy. It's soft. It's easily passed. Um, and this is when you know that you have a proper diet. Um, even exercise. Exercise plays a big part in keeping you regular. Did you know that? 30 minute walks a day. That kind of gets your system moving. Happy poop. So in all honesty, get to know your poop. As crazy as it sounds, get to know it. Um, pay attention to how often you go. Um, how long it takes for you to go. Um, and then what the end result looks like as well as what it smells like. And that's something that we're going to talk about later on in the movie as well. Boom, All right, so number two. <laughs> Poop. What's really in it? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Believe it or not, water makes up 75% of your stool. I mean, this is mind-blowing. How can something so solid be so water-filled? I, I really can't wrap my mind around it. It's Kind of interesting. Anyway, 75% of your stool is made up of water. Um, the rest is just that stinky combination of what's picked up, um, which can be fiber. It can be dead and live bacteria, other cells as well as mucus. So let's talk real quick about the good foods that kind of keep your um, bowel movements regular and good. Um, you have, of course, the fiber. Um, beans, nuts, that's all stuff that can be broken down into your system once you eat it. <laughs> then you got other foods that just don't know how to act. They don't know how to break it up once you get in, uh, once you get it into your system. Uh, foods such as um, insoluble fibers, <laughs> corn, and oat bran, as well as carrots. Those, just to name a few, are foods that do not break down. That explains why I eat corn and it comes out looking like the same thing. Exactly. Corn does not break down. It's one of those foods that kind of like sticks with you and stays with you. All right. So number three, color matters when it comes to poop. And as crazy as it sounds, yeah, I'm going to tell you a quick story. My godson, when he was about two, we had a family get together. And during that time, um, you know, we were eating, having a good time. He ate some desserts. And later that night, he had a, um, a bowel movement. It was like blood red. It's 
scared my cousin half to death. She didn't know what to do. Her mother called up saying, she was like, the baby done had a red bowel movement. We think he's bleeding. There's something wrong with him. My grandmother was having a fit. Though. Finally, they called my aunt. She's a pathologist. And she just said, all right, calm down. What did he eat? And they just went down the line of what he ate. He ate two red velvet cupcakes. Yeah. It's kind of like spicy foods. When you eat spicy foods, it's got to come back out, right? Yeah, it's going to have it's going to have a burning effect. Same thing with foods that are have like a heavy dye in them. Uh, my daughter, my yeah, my oldest daughter at one time was eating those little Welch's fr uh, fruit snacks. She used to eat them all the time. And the one day she had a bowel movement, it was psychedelic. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Is she okay? You eat. Come to find out, the dye from the fruit snacks, of course, naturally, as it breaks down and goes into your system, that dye is going to pick up and it's going to colorful, make your poop a little colorful. It's going to colorify it. So, um, <laughs> know the different kinds of colors that it could come in. So, say, for instance, if you eat red velvet cupcakes, it's going to come out red. You're going to eat something with a lot of dye in it, whatever those colors are, it's going to come out psychedelic. Um, but then there's also times that you have to, um, be, you know, be mindful of what you're eating. Um, if you eat, uh, dark leafy greens, it's going to come out dark green. So, um, just, like I said, be mindful. Another thing to be mindful of, um, sometimes if you take iron, let me find it real quick. If you take iron supplements or say if you eat black licorice, it's going to come out like a dark jet black stool um just be mindful of what you eat i'm continue to say this be mindful of what you eat because if you're eating stuff like that or taking iron it's going to naturally make your poop darker but if you're not taking iron and um you're not eating anything with like a dark dye in it consult your physician it could very well and i'm taking it from this um article could very well be bleeding in the upper digestional system. So make sure you check that and get it taken care of. And then also bear in mind, if you're taking certain medications, that can change your stool as well. Sometimes it could turn it into like a wild, like a light tannish color. Um, so make sure that you factor all that in. What did you eat? What are you taking medication wise? Um, stay smart on it. If you see those differences, if you see any changes, um, and you may not be taking anything or you haven't eaten anything out the, um, out the ordinary, call your doctor. Number four, picture the poop that show. The shape matters too. Oh, that shape matters too. Picture of poop. Picture your poop. Anyway. All right, so Dr. Oz um, was a guest on the Oprah Winfrey Show. Um, and he talked about the shape of your poop. Basically, your poop should be like one solid figure into an S shape. And that's a healthy poop. Um, you don't want it to be broken up into little pieces. Um, this all goes back to eating healthy. Make sure that you have fiber in your diet. Um, that you're not really like balking up on a lot of like meats and things. Like, you know, the good proteins, you know, fish, beans, um, things like that, vegetables. That's what's gonna help you get that that S shape. You know, we trying to get the, the little hour figure in our shape. We gotta get that S shape in your poop. S shape in your poop. S shape in your poop. <laughs> so incorporate fiber into your diet, um, mainly because fiber is like the glue that helps to bring everything together, which gives you a healthy poo. Now, according to Dr. Sheath, um, he did state that pencil thin poops, I've never heard of pencil thin poops before, but pencil thin poops could also be a, um, sign of, uh, rectal cancer. So make sure that you wisen up. Can't say it enough. You see changes, call the doctor, let them know. Numero cinco, number five. Terrible smelling stool may be a sign of infection. I'm sorry, when has poop ever smelled good before? I, is there really like a good smelling poop? I, I don't I don't know, but terrible smelling? Everything's terrible, it all smells terrible. So according to Dr. Seth, 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 I'm gonna get the name right eventually. 
According to Dr. Seth, um, he's saying that if there is a pungent smell in your stool, there's a sign. That's a sign of infection. So if it's like, if it reeks like something just like died and it rose up again, you should get checked out. So just how often should you go? Good question. Everybody's body is different. Some people have a time schedule. Their bodies just know. Time to go. Other people is like, we're going, and then they miss a day, and it's like, no, we're not going today, boo. Uh-uh. <laughs> boo. <laughs> but uh, it's normal. This is according to Dr. Seth. Seth. Get his name right one of these days. Dr. Seth. Um, the important thing is this is consistency. That you know your routine. You know what if even if you have some days where you don't go and you know that the next day you want to go that's still consistent but um if you have moments like that you might have to just go for that 30 minute walk exercise um incorporate a uh, healthier food in your diet especially fiber that's what's going to really help you to move along as well and then on the days that you might not be as regular going as you normally do Take a look at what you're doing. Um, you know, what did you eat that day? Sometimes on for the weekend, we could be lax. We just kind of go hog wild. We eat whatever we want. You know, on vacation, a lot of times people don't stick to like the workout. Um, they might not even stick to like your your normal diet. Um, so just be be mindful that um, you know when you when you go on vacation, if you see any change within your digestion system, your body could just be. Uh, it could be climate. It could be climate change and your body's trying to adjust to that. Um, maybe make sure that you do a little extra walking while you're on vacation. Um, but still enjoy yourself, of course. Eat whatever you want to. Um, but if you see those changes, just bear in mind. What did I eat? Did I exercise? But enjoy yourself. All right, so we, number seven, we back to diarrhea. <laughs> it says diarrhea is your poop on speed. Basically, like I said earlier, you're going... 85 miles per hour in a 45 mile per hour zone. You need a ticket. So with that, um, diarrhea normally takes 24 to 72 hours to um, work its way through your system. Anything longer than three days, consult your physician. Tell that poop. Slow up. Um, then of course, constipation is uh, the complete opposite where it goes into sloth mode. And uh, causes you pain and issues. So just um, kind of look at what you're eating, what you did eat, um, what you need to add. Just gonna keep, I'm gonna sound like a broken record. Fiber, 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 fiber. Folks, we're at number eight. We are almost there to the end. Um, all right, so healthy poop should stink in the toilet. So that means some of the people I work with just ain't healthy then. Nah, for real though, y'all, they be blowing up the bathroom. I'm like, gosh, what did you eat? All right, I'm be serious. But um, you should only smell it in the toilet only. Um, and then listen to the sound of your poop. How does it hit the water? Do you get like that bloop? Um, <laughs> or does it just kind of like... <laughs> The silent drop. <laughs> but on a serious note, um, a lot of times, for the longest, a lot of people said if, if your poop floats, that it's healthy. Um, actually, according to, I want to say Dr. Seath, Seth Seath, I think it's Seath, truthfully. Um, if your poop floats, it's um, high in fat content, which could cause issues and problems. So, um, keep an eye on it. I mean, seriously, keep an eye on it. Check, check and see, are you a, are you a sinker or are you a swimmer? Um, if you have a lot of swimmers, might be something that you want to consult your physician about. If you're a sinker, a solid sinker, good job. Keep doing what you're doing. Number nine. It's normal to pass gas between 10 and 18 times a day. It really is. Um... As embarrassing as it can be, just pass the gas. You know, don't try to hold it. Um, one thing that I can speak from experience, holding in gas, it bloats you. you. You feel miserable. You feel horrible. 
Um, you're just keeping in those toxins. So basically, um, when you pass gas, you're letting toxins out. Um, same thing when you like exercise and you're exerting and you're breathing. Your lungs are constantly breathing in. It catches all the bad toxins and as you breathe out, it pushes it out. Same thing with passing gas. With farting. Just fart. Get some spray. Ks, ks, spray, man. Spray. Fart. Don't hold that there. Fart. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't never heard about a poop transplant before in my life. Never. That's why I said I have got to tell people about this stuff. So check this out. There have been people um, who have had like a, like a bacterial infection and they took the healthy poop from another person. No lie. Like I said, I'm putting... You, you got to read this for yourself. They took the healthy poop from another person, inserted into the sick person's intestines, and lo and behold, bam, they moved without a problem. Now, this has only been um, proven um, that it works for a, a person that has bouts with reoccurring. Now, it says reoccurring diarrhea associated with a C. difficile bacterial infection. So it does have to be a certain bacterial infection that the transplant would be um, would be beneficial for. And it's also been um, proven that um, a healthy person's poop, when it came in contact with the um, infected um, intestine, that it actually responded a lot better than antibiotics. Um, or probiotics. Stuff is interesting. I never knew. So, I mean, if you're sick, what you supposed to do? Call your friend up or something? Be like, hey, yo, I need you. Anyway, there are poop donors out there, but you have to make sure that you you ask somebody um, that's healthy. And um, I wouldn't, like, put it up on Craigslist or something, you know, looking for a poop. You know, you just ask your friend or family and they can, they can get you moving. All right, so I know a lot of people are like, this is where I think number 11, reading on the toilet isn't so healthy. It's not. You know, when you're in the toilet and you do it like this, and then you do it like this, and like this, If you sit like this on the toilet, you just nasty. All right, so sitting on the toilet for long periods of time aren't good because blood flow gets cut off to your anus. Yes, I said it, your anus, and not the planet. What happens is it restricts blood flow, and it can either cause hemorrhoids or it can cause hemorrhoids to be um, inflamed. So um, the longer you sit on the toilet, just remember, I mean, if you've ever sat there for a long time, you try to get your life together and do what you had to do, yeah, your legs just like fall asleep, trying to make sure that if you haven't had a good movement, um, I would say like less than five minutes, get up, walk around, try to walk it down. Walk it down. Oh, walk it down. Walk it down. Walk it down. So yeah, don't sit too long. Number 12, we are at our last one. We made it, yes! Number 12, guess what? Your cell phone is probably infected with poo. Ew! All right, so half the problem is, whenever you go to the bathroom some days, you have people that, like, hear people that go in there, and they either throw water on their hand, shake it off, and then they do this thing. Man, I don't want water through you. Don't, you just put poop in your hair. Anyway. Um, washing your hands thoroughly, like singing a happy birthday song, making sure that you get all that junk out your hands. Do it, because if you don't wash your hands enough, you're going to have poop on your phone. And then you're going to put it up on your ear. And then you're going to have a poopy, you're going to have a doo-doo ear. Another thing that you could do, um, don't use your phone in the bathroom. I mean, it's hard, easier said than done, because everybody gets in there and we want to sit. 
Remember, don't sit too long. Don't use your phone in the bathroom neither. Um, another thing that you can do to keep your phone clean is at the end of the day, take an alcohol pad, wipe your phone down, clean any bacteria off. But the number one thing, can't stress enough, wash your hands. It's like one of those, like, what do they call it? Uh, it needs to be an epidemic. Wash your hands. You can keep germs and all kinds of stuff down. Guaranteed. If you wash your hands more, you won't be able to spread for so much stuff. But um, the more that you wash your hands and keep your hands clean, um, it'll it can take down the the, um, the spread of E. coli bacteria. So that's where it comes from. From your boo. And that's your Buddha Bada Buddha. All right, so I sure hope that this video was um, uh, informative, entertaining. Yeah, it was quite entertaining to me. So the more information that I get, I'm going to be sharing as long as it's... Um, blank moment. Yeah, so the more information that I get, I'm going to share with you all. Um, if I get it and I can see that it's something that could be of use, I'm definitely going to let you know. So, um, until next time, that has been one of the most interesting videos I have made yet. Yeah. I'm sure there's going to be more to come. So, remember, check your poop. Keep yourself healthy. Walk 30 minutes a day. Incorporate fiber into your meals. And fought. Fought daily.